Okay, so Mur Ligay's meeting on 20th of February 2024. Welcome everybody. Uh Yu Hang kindly uh posted an agenda and stuff and discussion points for us on GitHub as per usual. Um, but there has in the last month been lots of activity in Warwick with lots of new data coming through by email. So um if the team there is okay with us switching straight to that the new data that's come out of the testing of the compounds that have been sent. I think that those data will uh, inform a lot of the subsequent discussion um, because there's some interesting numbers coming out. So um, uh, Adrian, Laura, uh, Adrian, I guess you sent through a PowerPoint just before the meeting. We, would you be happy yeah. to run us through that? Yeah, certainly. That'd be great. Right. So I'll just share my screen. Yeah. Uh, Okay, can we all see this? Yes, that's great. Okay, so the work we're going to talk about uh, concerns the screening of um, atom-wise compounds, OSA compounds, uh, received in May and July last year um, against uh, screening against pseudomonas MER-D and MER-E. And latterly, uh, compounds received in February from Yuhang, uh, which we've trialed against uh, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, mercy. <clears throat> so, um, going to the second slide. Uh, so, brief, for, for those who want it, these are the actual assay details. Um, I'm going to draw your attention to the very last sentence, which is how we deal with the data. So basically, we fit it to a four-parameter model which estimates the lowest and highest uh, responses over a concentration range, uh, gives an IC50, and also gives an estimation of the Hill coefficient. Um, and so the first table I'm going to show is, are the IC50 data with pseudomonas originosum uh, D. Um, <clears throat> So the right-hand column are the original single concentration data we obtained a little while ago at half millimolar. Um, the, um, the IC50 for each compound has been uh, established and a Hill coefficient as well. Um, in most parts, the original HIC data are more or less consistent with the IC50 data, with the exception of OSA00145, which gives a much lower response than we would <clears throat> have anticipated from the original data. Um, I'll come back to that in a second. The Hill coefficients look generally okay. They're around, <clears throat> they are around about one, which you should, which they should be for a, a simple saturation model. Um, there are exceptions to that. Um, 001145 is one of them, for example. So if we actually look at some of the curves. So the positive control, which is ADPCP, um, gives a very, very nice hyperbolic saturation uh, of inhibition against inhibitor concentration. Hill coefficient is about one. Um, 00145, you do get inhibitory response, but it decelerates markedly compared to what you would expect if it was going to reach 100% um, as the concentration increases. And what this basically means is that it makes repetition a little difficult because you don't need a big change in inhibitory potency to really shift the actual estimation in IC50. So at the moment for that particular compound, we have fairly high estimations of IC50, um, 0.6 up to about 2.5 millimolar. With MERDI for the other compounds, um, the data are subject to some degree of scatter. Um, but what we're seeing for all the compounds that we've tested are uh, IC50s that range between about 200 up to around about 700 or 800 micromolar. Um, so of these, could I ask a question, Adrian? Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Can I ask a question just because it's on the screen there. The IC50 for ADPCP of 49 micromolar, is that expected, that value? 
Yeah, that's what we've consistently got. Okay. Um, so with um, some of the other compounds against MERDI, so 00160, 164, 167, um, the data actually look quite nice. Uh, you, you're getting a, a fairly straightforward saturation curve um, that you could imagine being the result of a single interaction. Again, the IC50s are not really super low, but they, as if they are fragments, they're, <clears throat> they're not an unreasonable starting point from an enzymatic point of view. Um, so 00169 <clears throat> shows an extremely low response, um, which plateaus or will plateau very, very early. And this is something that we see a lot with E as well. So if I just move on. He said. Um, <clears throat> So this is the last compound uh, that gave greater than 50% inhibition in the original screen against MERD, 00172. <clears throat> Again, an IC50, about half millimolar. Right. MERD-E, again, um, the same approach. These are the assay details. Uh, we, ask, <clears throat> we look at the data in the same way. <clears throat> Um, now, in this case, the response to our control inhibitor is considerably more potent. The IC50 is about 340 mic uh, nanomolar, um, but the Hill coefficients are generally are low, less than one. And whether or not this is MERE specific, I don't know, but it is characteristic of this particular data set. So, again, looking at the curves, um, the positive control, we've actually increased the number of points here to cover the sub-micromolar range here. So you've got the complete, you've got the complete curve here. Um, OSA001145, which previously with Modi was disappointing, gives an extremely nice IC50 with an IC with, of 36 micromolar. Um, and Similarly, OSA double one double five again gives a relatively well behaved IC fifty, but again it's plateauing early. Um, similarly, zero zero one four seven plateauing early, zero zero one five six the same. So, what again? What we're seeing is something that you could, you could actually be um, considering something like negative cooperativity if this was a multimeric enzyme, um, which it isn't. <laughs> So precisely why we're, we're getting relatively low maximal inhibition responses, I am not too sure. But it is a feature of a lot of the Murray hits from the Atomwise library. Um, okay. We have one hit, 00172 against Murray, which basically gives a sigmoid response, which is highly cooperative, which could well be pro uh, complement or enzyme aggregation. So finally, we have Pseudomonas originosa mercy, which we do have to trial against the atomized compounds, but here we're going to talk about the responses we've got with a set of um, WHY compounds sent through um, in February, and these are based upon the par <clears throat> paraselopyrimidine inhibitors that were identified by Hamid et al. Um, at AZ. Again, the assay details are there, if you, should you wish, um, and how we deal with the data. These are the compounds we're talking about at the moment. So they were sent through in February. They have a bicyclic nucleus with, um, which is substituted um, with a heterocycle of the uh, of the amine, which I'm pointing out with my pointer here. And you have the substituents um, elsewhere, including a guanidinium group, for example, here. 
So we've trialed these against Pseudomonas mercy, and basically, they are a lot nicer in many respects. So the weakest of them is WYH761P, which gives an IC54.8 micromolar uh, with a whole curve, with a with a hill coefficient of uh, it's obscured here, but it's about 0.9. Um, it's from my perspective, almost ideal data. Um, if you now that's the least potent. As things get more potent, you lose data, you, you lose the ability to see the relationship at lower substrate, at lower inhibitor concentrations. So the next weakest is WYH1715P with an IC50 1.12 micromolar. And as we go further down the compound series, um, clearly we're getting IC50s that are going to be half micromolar or less, but the actual numbers are pretty unreliable because the amount of data that um, the program has to estimate below the IC50 is essentially either non-existent or, or a single point. So essentially, this particular compound has an IC50 of probably half micromolar, but the data set will have to be re repeated at a lower uh, substrate, uh, at a lower inhibitor concentration range uh, for us to be sure about what the number actually is. And similarly, <clears throat> For WIH 78, 9, and 25, the IC 50s are so far below the bottom end of the concentration range tested that they are not going to give a reliable estimate with this particular data set, and we have to repeat them, going to much lower concentrations. For example, WIH 25, 5P, you can actually fit uh, obtain an, uh, an estimation of IC50, which is probably nonsensical. It's about 50 nanomolar, but it's guesswork. So really, what it basically means is that we have nanomolar inhibitors, but we don't know how many yet in terms of actual potency. But they are in the range that I think we're expecting them to be. And that's it. Great. Fantastic. Anyone got any immediate questions about the data that's on screen? Yeah, so for the for the last three uh, compounds, I just want to illustrate that they uh, they were made uh, originally from the uh, AstraZeneca paper, uh, just uh, sent as a control. Mm -hmm. uh, see, uh, also like uh, if, if that's possible to try out uh, to some other ligase, ligases, that would be great just to see the potential of multitasking if possible uh, at the same time uh, the other three that has less uh, potency uh, as we're shown uh, uh, yeah uh, we, we uh, uh, the other three was not quite as uh, expected but uh, we'll continue to make derivatives uh, yeah, that, that's basically it. Okay. So yeah. the normal, why the three last three compounds were very potent. It's, yeah. So where where we're at with everything at the moment is that the three compounds on the screen now, uh, we have a sufficient UDP Murnac to basically finish those off and do the lower concentration ranges and get decent estimates of IC50s, which is what we'll do. We are in the process of having to make more UDP Murnac. Uh, while that's happening, we can actually turn our attention to the other Merli gases for which we do have substrates in stock and try these WIH compounds against them. So that's the general idea. Um, and then, of course, once we've got UD, more UDB Murnac in stock, we can go back and finish off the atomized hits that we've got against Mer C. And we will, of course, polish off Mer F as well. So that, that's the general move forward at the moment uh, as far as the entomology of work is concerned. Great. Um, yeah, just to uh, flag up the guanidinium compound, which isn't terribly active at about five micromolar. 
Um, so the, I mean, the, the design of this compound was the, the inclusion of the guanidinium is, is meant to be one of these entryway criteria that's meant to help the compound accumulate. So um, even though the potency isn't very good, um, it's still worth at some point trying this compound against wild type bacteria um, just to see if it does anything at all. Um, because we know that the most potent compounds, I think the ones on your last slide, most likely will be effluxed. Yeah. I think it's worth a go. I mean, the, the MICs with things like these, like the Syrian, are sort of uh, micromolar or thereabouts. Right. Um, so I think it's definitely worth a shot. I do. Right. And the other thing is, we don't know. I mean, it could be that these things are accumulated as well. If we're lucky. <laughs> Great, very nice. So yeah, there's some clear ways forward there. Um, the yeah, the molecule um, again on your last slide, Adrian. Yeah, I'll go with that. The the potent one without the methyl on the five membered ring, so nine four p. Um, Joe, you were uh, emailing about that compound. Is is Am I right in, I've forgotten the email train, sorry. Am I right in thinking that you were recommending that we tried to get a structure of that guy with MERD? Sorry, was that the Correct. thing you were saying by email? Sorry, you're muted, Joe, if you're talking or if you finish, that's fine. Yes, correct. Okay, and so we are in touch with Scott about trying to get a structure of this with Murdi, as I understand it. And I think you hang your you're in touch with Scott about shipping that compound. Yeah, already on it. So, so I'm about to ship it today or tomorrow. Okay, great. Uh, right, just just waiting like if just waiting for this meeting to finish, like just in case if any if there's any idea of like shipping other structures. So. I'm not quite yeah. eager to ship it yesterday, so. Yeah, great. All right, fantastic. Um, yeah, so going back to the more fragment-like atom-wise type compounds, we will um, comb through the data and look at some of the ones that are giving the the slightly nicer uh, IC50s, the double digit rather than, you know, triple digit, yeah. and see what we can deduce from that. I guess I was quite surprised at how uh, consistent the values are. I mean, they're, they're all you know, within an order of magnitude of each other. And maybe that's not surprising, but it feels like it's it's quite surprising there is such consistency there. there are, I think there are two that are double digit. Everything else is triple digit. Yeah. So there's not a lot of variance there, which is kind of interesting. Do we, is that surprising or, or, or a red flag of any kind, or is it just, that's the way it is? Um, I don't think it's the consequence of the assay itself because we yeah. probably screened against the assay itself as opposed to the enzyme being assayed by it. Um, and so well, I don't think we're looking at that type of artifact if it in, indeed is an artifact. Right. Um, I think the data is the data. That, that's really all I can tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and. And it, it, I mean, is there a control where you just add DM, you know, DMSO or whatever, or vehicle or whatever it is? Yeah, um, an actual fact, since you ask, um, we've, in the past, we've uh, trialled DMSO just on its own. Um, DMSO has no impact upon any more ligase activity between zero and, uh, in our hands, 5%. And at the moment, you were working at a DMSO concentration of uh, just over 1%. At the moment, right. Okay, good. I mean, I I don't think I'm pretty sure I haven't accidentally spiked my DMSO with WYH twenty five five P. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Um, for, uh, just if you wouldn't mind just going back to the it was the second set of evaluation of the atom wise compounds. It's Murray. in the middle of your presentation. Um, 
the uh, if you just that the was like eight. Yeah, and there were two. Wait, there was two comments. There's one which is thirty seven, and there's one at the bottom. One one six nine is fifty six micromol yeah. at the bottom of the table. Can you just click to slide ten? So sixty nine is that guy over there. Okay, all right. Well, that's yeah. That's one of our sulfonamides. Got it. Yeah. And the previous one uh, you alluded to is that one there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is different. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll we'll check these out. Um, okay. Uh, but, like I say, these have to be trialed against Mercy itself, and they yep. have to be trialed against Merev as well. Yeah. Yep. Um, the one thing that did occur to me is it is it simply worth seeing activity across the board. Um, whether it was actually worth trialing MerB, which is maybe a surprising thing to say, but there is a possibility that some of these things are taking out the uridine binding site. So anyway, that, that's that's a, a future discussion. Okay. All right. Any other comments on the data or suggestions for additional things we should be doing? Adrian. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Laura. Uh, Adrian, what kind of time scale are you looking at to test those last three compounds from UHAN, which are the AZ compounds, uh, against the other ligases so we can see whether they're doing any multi targeting at all? Would be my scale. I mean, we, we, um, we've got. I mean, if, if you mean, do we have enough substrate? Um, for MER-D, we certainly do. Uh, for MER-E, we certainly do. Um, for uh, Mercy, we only really have enough material left to finish off um, mm. the three outstanding WHY compounds, which I couldn't actually get uh, low enough in concentration uh, at the time. Hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, time scale. I was thinking more just to see whether they're well, time scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a week. Okay, cool. So, wow. uh, Joe, uh, have we got a list of uh, to do items to get that thing published uh, on the AZ compounds? Should we um, start constructing a list of what needs to be done and start putting that into a Gantt chart so we can just press on with things. That would be nice. Hmm. I mean, we've been asking, you know, so it's great. We finally got, you know, stuff that's data now that's consistent with AZ publication. A couple of these are literature compounds. They seem to be coming in pretty much the same now that we're at the lower um, URC enzyme concentration. It's more consistent with AZ stuff. So I think your question to Adrian is the right one. If we could get especially mirror D data, uh, which at some point a year ago, there was single point data at one millimolar. I'm not sure what the enzyme concentration was. That's I've sent this around a couple of times. I think Laura shared this a long time ago. Um, so I guess getting mirror D and mirror E data or these three the three compounds on the last slide, they are more potent ones to see are we within tenfold or is it a hundredfold? You know, what's the mm -hmm. what's the relative potency C versus D versus E for these last three compounds? And this would be great also for for uh, Matt's and Yuhan's um, CC for carb thing or carb for C whatever CC for carb. <laughs> um, Proposal. I mean, if they had data showing that these compound, this series was multi targeting, that would be a powerful addition to their proposal. So, if that's something Adrian can do in the near term, that would be awesome. Mm. So, I think um, we've had the answer that's a, a week's time for, for this. So, yeah. So, what well, is your deadline, Matt, for your? Yeah. Yeah. It means finding seven days in a row. Uh, one thing I was one thing I was going to say, or I'm going to ask actually, given the their potency um, in general, the WHY compounds, um, and their relative impotency is antimicrobials, apparently, unless you're talking about efflux modified strains. 
is their mileage in considering appending them to something else, like a Sidera 4 or some other Trojan horse type vehicle? From a chemical perspective, is this something that's plausible? It's. Um, I think so. Go ahead, Matt. No, I mean, uh, you know, any any molecule can be made, right? It's just that <laughs> well, uh, it depends on the money and the time. So, yeah. um, and, and so linking this to something, we'd have to figure out where to do that. Um, so, um, I mean, that, that that's always something we can do, but it would need extra resource, I think, to, to, depending on difficulty of the linkage and stuff. But so, certainly it's possible. I, I guess in terms of um, Yuhang's PhD, coherence it, the the entryway stuff is the important thing so trying pyrid pyridiniums and guanidiniums and stuff like that um and once we've dealt with that uh, aspect of things we could think about something else um, unless somebody else wants to take it on yeah i mean i think the again if if adrian you can show that these compounds have some level of multi-targeting within i would hope like tenfold if you could actually hit your d for example uh within tenfold of mere C in Pseudomonas. I mean, I think, for example, I know Lori has been asking about resubmitting an R21. So I think that would be, with that kind of, again, with that kind of data, that would be very strong preliminary data to support uh, a re, you know, renewed or revised R21, uh, which you can look at either as a follow-up to what Yu Hang's doing with um, these primitivizing <laughs> derivatives, or even the Sidera core. Um, you know, we do have the structural information now, um, and we we'll, might get some more. So, I think I think there's a lot that can be done if you can demonstrate on the AZ series, for example, that you're multi-targeting within some reasonable, um, what do you call, it? Uh, relative potency between the two uh, mirror ligases. So I think it's it's very exciting. I mean, it looked like there was some preliminary data again from what Laura shared like a year ago that the the nine compound looked like it was pretty potent against mere D. So and I don't know what concentration that assay was actually done at. It could have been back when, when things were being done at micromolar uh, uh, pseudomonas enzyme concentration. So we'll see. Okay, but it's exciting. I think it's very exciting uh, progress. Thank you, Adrian. Okay. Um, one last thing about enzyme concentrations. We, at the moment, all the molar assays that we're doing at the moment, or I'm doing at the moment, um, the enzyme concentration extends up to around about 50 nanomolar or thereabouts. Um, on the lower end, I mean, looking at some of the numbers in the Hamid paper, uh, where you have IC50s of eight, six nanomolar or thereabouts, Trying to reach those type of concentrations is doable, but it but the accuracy is going to probably be a little limiting, simply because we can't go, go much lower than about six nanomolar in the assays we're running at the moment. Um, if we, I have, think that's, yeah. I think that's fine. I think that's. I'm sorry, Adrian. I think that's fine. I wouldn't. Don't. Don't. <laughs> I know I've pushed really hard on this topic, but. I, I don't stress about getting all the way down there. I mean, I think ultimately it's just, it's, you know, the potent, you're showing that these compounds are potent, yeah. very potent. And ultimately you want to be putting these into the microbiology is ultimately the the goal here, right? So yeah. so I think it's just showing that, you know, you're very potent and then can, with some of the things Johan's doing, you start, can you see any kind of, you know, wild type, you know, MICs against Pseudomonas or E. coli? Um, so I think that's, yeah, don't stress about trying to get down and, and pushing, you know, so hard on the lower limit of detection there. That's, yeah. I don't think that's critical personally. I think you've, yeah. I think you've made, it, I think you've made the big jump and I think you're in a good space. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, yeah, do we need more compound for doing MICs of, of the new W compounds? No, no, we don't. Not at the moment anyway. Um, I mean, when the new ones come in, as I understand it, there are issues with their stability, aren't they? So uh, when they do arrive, I guess we're going to we're going to have to do that. Any microbiology as well as the actual entomology, more or less. Yeah. Back. Okay, I'll I'll let um, Jenny know, and you can yeah. coordinate when it arrives. Yeah. yeah. 
All right. Thank yeah. you very much, Adrian. Okay. I shall stop sharing. Beautiful day. Really good. Um, so, uh, Laura, I don't know if you wanted to update on any soaking. I can do an update. I don't have a, a, a slide deck because everything I've been trying has been shown the same. So I can only get APO crystals. I cannot get uh, either co-crystallizations. I've done a lot of experiments in the past months. Um, or soaking, nothing is working. Uh, so that was where mu E, mu D, and then I started to work with mu C. Everything is from E. coli. Everything I do is E. coli. Um, and the mu C was giving me really beautiful crystals in the presence of compounds. So I was quite hopeful that something would move forward on that end. Uh, however, when I tested the crystals diffraction, uh, the fraction was very poor, which I'm assuming it has to do with the cryoprotectant because uh, these crystals are a bit difficult to cryoprotect. So therefore, I set up some crystal plates in the VMXI beamline. This beamline can do in situ um, crystallography. So you just set up uh, in a specific crystal plate so they, they're not the normal crystal plates. Uh, you can set that in the, in the drops there, and then you can collect on different um, crystals in situ without freezing or anything, and then merge the data sets so you can get the full uh, picture. So I've done co-crystallizations on that, and I'm waiting for the crystals to grow because they take a little bit longer than the other mu ligases. Uh, I went yesterday to set up new crystals as well, just in case. <laughs> So I've got uh, some plates there waiting. And as soon as the crystals grow, we can just uh, put them on the queue to be tested. Um, yeah, and let's see, let's see if we can get anything at least from the in situ crystallography. Um, I'm, and I'm also trying to um, optimize some micro crystals for doing X fills um, and do some types of crystallography if we can. <laughs> it's just, I'm just trying to cover everything that I can do with these crystals that I'm getting and then uh, we can work from there. Um, but then right. I'm, I'm happy to listen into everything that the SGC has been done and has been doing in case I can copy something here and move forward in a different area. Because I don't mind swapping to pseudomonas or something like that if that helps. So, yeah. Right. And these are co-crystallization experiments, the ones you just mentioned. Co-crystallization and soaking. Every, I'm trying everything I can. Right, and these and these are the, but you're the the compounds you're using are the same set of compounds. So it's a mixture of the UHAN compounds and the atom. Yeah, I haven't tried the UHAN compounds yet. Okay, because these, this is all well, new data, so I didn't. Yeah, and right. the compounds recently arrived, and they were gonna be only for essays. So, yeah, no, fine. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't, but I'm happy to try them now. And if they are more potent, I'm more confident that they will be working rather than a two digits or three mm -hmm. digit macromolar inhibitor of the OSA compounds. Right. So right, what right. I'm, I'm a little yeah. confused, Laura. Yeah. What compounds are you actually using for all these tutorials? The the I always say compounds, the um, atom wise compounds, the the ones that we just did. Okay. I mean, yeah. So just speaking of the atom wise compounds, you guys done a lot of work there. Uh, Adrian made some comment. He thought maybe they were actually binding at the other substrate site. So do you have any evidence they're they're even at the ATP site yet? No. Okay. No, we just, don't. I mean, I mean it, it's speculation okay. on my part because they actually work across all of the mer ligases, and if you, so the common the common substrates are going to be ATP, but also the other common commonality is the UDP group of the uh, UDP substrate. I mean, I would, I would, I would almost bet on that as well. I mean, your 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 hypothesis there. I mean, if you kind of look at these, I mean, there's work that was done in the past, uh, published work on. What's that? That's the UDP site, I guess. Um, there's there's several crystal structures in the protein data bank of the of these compounds worked on for you know for a number of years on the non-ATP site, and these compounds look kind of they have some features that are similar to those compounds. So um, I think it's a tough go. I mean, they're fragments, right? So you're you're trying to get something of several hundreds of nanomolar, I guess, right? Or yeah. I mean, there are published there are compounds published which actually do have dual activity against Mer C, um, Mer B, and also uh, Mer D. So it's not beyond the bounds of possibility. That that's one of the reasons I was interested in looking at Mer B actually. Okay. So where's what's the status of E. coli? Um, I know 
I know I've pushed really hard on the pseudomonas, but in terms of, you know, we're just talking about, you know, trying to get the pseudomonas from your D of the AZ compounds. Um, what about E. coli? Uh, is that something that's also on the queue to possibly do with those with uh, like three bones. potent? Yeah. Well, I was thinking both enzymatically, but also crystallography, I guess both, yeah. So is enzymatically, is that something that's in the, on, the, on the possibility? I'm not sure what you have for E. coli in terms of e assay. I think you have your D, right? I've got yeah, all of we, them, yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. we do. I mean, it, it, it is possible. Uh, and maybe, I don't know. I mean, quite often what people used to do, if um, one particular species was getting a problem, we'd try another one. So it might, might well be that with the atomized compounds, uh, we might have more success crystallizing the E. coli proteins with them. I don't know. I, I guess I was talking more about the, on the enzymatic side. So, yeah. you know, we have kind of, there's two ways to go here with the multi-targeting, right? We go pseudomonas, mirror CD or CE, whichever. The other option is to go pseudomonas, mirror C, E. coli, mirror C, or pseudomonas, mirror D, E. coli, mirror D. So then you at least you're, you're hitting the same target, but you're hitting... Mm -hmm two different uh, species. Um, so that's, this was wondering in terms of profiling those AZ, AZ, comp Yuhan's AZ compounds against some of the E. coli mirror ligases would be also a good thing to do. I think, I think AZ reported some E. coli mirror, mirror C data. I can't remember. I thought they had some, maybe they might've had some mirror E. coli data, I think in their paper. They do in the HAMI uh, paper. Yes. Anyway, just, just another thought in terms of when you're trying to get to this multi-targeting objective, uh, the other way to go is across species for the same year latest. So to my mind, the, the multi-targeting advantage was always in same species, different targets, right? Mercima D. Yeah. Because that's the argument, preventing development of resistance. Um, that's, I think it's a more powerful Yeah, Yeah, I, mean, I, yeah, I I agree. I agree. That's, but I'm just saying, I mean, again, it's <laughs> the data sometimes tells you which direction to go. Um, right. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, okay. good luck, Laura. Yeah. Hope Thank that goes well. Too. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, so, uh, Bart, you, you, you came on um, video. We, we were just talking about... Um, Scott's going to be doing a, a little bit of crystallography in one of you hand compounds. Did you have anything you wanted to add? Yeah. Um, well, I suppose you and Laura probably have all the most up-to-date information from Scott's group. I did notice actually Julie was uh, present. Um, I don't know, if Julie, if you're there, if you want to introduce yourself. Um, Julie is our program manager. Uh, so she's our boss. Maybe she's I think she was just logging in today to be a fly on the wall. But um, so, you know, the Scotch group has been pretty busy with um, testing E. coli, Pseudomonas, and Acinetobacter and doing all, you know, and coming up pretty much with all the same results that Laura has had, um, which is um, empty crystal structures. <laughs> um, they And they were, to speak to that point of... Um, the ATP binding site, they were also doing co-crystallizations with AMP, ADP, ATP, and they solved a bunch of E. coli structures um, with just AMP, ADP, and ATP bound, um, and no, uh, nothing of the other compounds bound. Um, they st are still um, working on it, but it sounds like they uh, met, are going to be getting some of Yuheng's compounds. And so that's our that's just what we're working on. They've been pretty pretty busy um, with all, you know, Merci and Merdi from the three organisms, um, but we haven't had any luck. And the compounds we're using are the usual suspects, uh, J66, FO9, A19, MO2, M17, and MO8. Um, yeah, I'm trying those two as well. Yeah. Yeah. So if you got an so if you got sorry if you got an update because I exchanged emails with Scott and the last time he like last week there was only M zero two and F zero nine that had been actually 
tested and that Puck was still sitting with those other compounds. But maybe you've gotten an update in the last few days? No, I, ha I don't have an update in the last few days. Yeah, so I think they have a... Uh -huh. so, so one of the things I, you know, I think I sent to Adrian and so on. I mean, I know you're right now, you're low on the, the substrate from your C. Um, so that's, you know, can't do much about that until you get some more your C. But so we don't really have data for these fragments. We only have data on one compound out of those fragments against your C. And Scott's using this truncated form that was used originally, you know, developed at SSGCID and delivered all the AZ structures. So it's just truncated without a second domain. Um, so anyway, so I was one, one of the things there would be, you know, at some point we could get the mirror C data for those five enamine compounds that would at least say, okay, here's the more interesting potent ones against mirror C. So then you could possibly, you know, have more of a focus, try more different kinds of experiments. Um, I know M02 was like the KD was like 500 nanomolar. I'm sneezing. Yeah, no, 500 micromolar, excuse me. Um, so it was a very weak compound. So, but we don't know how much the potency of those other compounds fragments are. So it's kind of a little bit of a shot in the dark already at the moment. But that was the last, I think, uh, a few several days ago, Bart, that Scott had updated me on the those F09 and M02 were the two that they had tried, at least looking at the data set. He said they had some, they had almost a puck of, I think, the other compounds that were still sitting at the synchrotron for them to do the data collection. Okay. Yeah, and just not, just to find out the origin of these compounds too. So that, yeah, some some of the things we're talking about came from the atomized library, and some of them came from the enamine collection that that Joe and, and Laurie and others designed. Um, I mean, as long as we're using the consistent codes, we won't get confused. But the origin of those has become a little bit smushed together. I think it doesn't matter ultimately, but as long as we maintain the codes, we'll be fine. Mm -hmm. All right, we will. Well, I'm sure Scott will update you guys. I think before he updates me, so you should. Okay. <laughs> um, hey, hey, Scott's been Scott's been fantastic. That's all I've been saying. Yeah, the really, group was very, awesome. very responsive. Yeah, they're uh, awesome. Just very positive. Uh, we're, we're so lucky. I mean, Jan and uh, we're good together. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they were obviously great as well. But I mean, Scott's just been just carried on a tradition of SSGCID being really, really, really engaged, and so we're very grateful for that. Yeah, well said, absolutely. Um, all right, uh, Yu Hang, uh, did you want to give a very quick update to everybody on the next set of compounds that you're targeting and why those are being made? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, let me see. And then after this, I'll I'll go to the uh, the northeastern team just for yeah, an update right. about yes. stuff that you guys were thinking about doing for compound synthesis. Oh, Matt, would you mind uh, would you mind bringing up the uh, share share the screen for me, please? Thanks. Sorry. Yeah, about yeah because of my yeah. computer is <laughs> overloaded. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nice name for the meeting, by the way. You hang the dragon oh. meeting. It's good. Thanks. So yeah, here are the structures. I, I will overlook your uh, carbon bonding to hydrogen gaff here. You hang and pretend that never happened. Uh, here, <laughs> here are the structures. All right. Thanks. So, uh, yeah. So these structures were uh, the first round of compound that I've shipped, and uh, Adrian has just uh, reported the uh, the results. Of IC50 results of these. Uh, I'm sending these, uh, I'm posting these structures just because we need a correlation of the codes, like a WIH and OSA yeah. numbering, just to make it make it absolutely clear. Uh, for the second rounds, uh, I'm just making the aiming derivatives and uh, guanidinium derivatives uh, of these structures. Uh, the green ones were like the ones or uh, I'm currently working on. Uh, the black ones are uh, of like a lower priority uh, because either some like reaction conditions haven't been set up 
uh, or the or the starting materials haven't been successfully made, still trying uh, different ways of managing that. So right, that's a quick one. So Yuhan, so have you considered, I mean, I don't know if chemistry helps you at all, but I mean, you're yeah. kind of, I mean, I haven't really looked at the structure here real close, but I think, I, which I have, but anyway, I'm just wondering if you had a more longer linker to your guanidinium or your amidine um, to try to get it out more into solvents. Um, I'm just wondering if, you know, if you look at the, you know, the one result you have from Adrian now, um, yeah. I think maybe you're just jamming that basic group too much into the active site. And, you know, is it worthwhile trying to get things out more out into solvent? I mean, even that, I, I think, you know, Anyway, just 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 the yeah. thought that you might think think about extending and just having a a two carbon linker or something out into a basic group. And does that help in any in terms of uh, just maintaining the key the, the potency but adding your your permeabilizer? Okay, Joe, this is Bob yeah. asking. Uh, I'm going to respond to this because uh, some of these compounds came from a discussion that I had with uh, Yohang and Matt uh, maybe a couple of years ago. And a lot of the things that you're suggesting are certainly possible, but that is a much more significant synthetic uh, endeavor than would be necessary at this time. I mean, so uh, I think we can appreciate the, you know, that this uh, it's something to think about, but they would think about at this point, the synthetic accessibility of the compounds and exploring the, the key functional components here. And I think that you hang as, you know, with the amount of time and effort that we have at this point, I think these are very reasonable suggestions. These ones here, if you can see my hand, um, this guy is the original uh, fix of the efflux, right? Where we're changing the, the OH here, which is the known compound, AZ5505, to an amy um and that compound didn't give anything for the on the mic but but we didn't get an, a, an ic50 for it so it's being resynthesized and retested along with its more elaborate guanidinium variant so this is a kind of resynthesis and this this is a simplified version of that guy um this compound that gave the five micromolar value i guess it would be useful you hang to have the corresponding compound where it's just an nh2 here did we ever oh, get we've that tested. We've, t uh, we've tested already uh with the uh spr i think yeah, yeah but not for the ic50 right because this case five micromolar with this guy on there but i just wondered if that's not there what we get oh uh yeah sure uh i can resynthesize them and ship it if, uh... Yeah, you know, maybe include that just because I, I don't know if this I don't think cyclohexyl works here. That's all. So it'd be good to know. Oh, yeah, because the I, I believe that because the SPR uh, SPR results for this compound was very uh, bad. Uh, that's right. why we. Yeah. All right. Great. Thanks for putting those up. It's really good. Um, and then just in the time we have remaining, um, if uh, I don't know if the Northeastern team, um, Bob, Laurie, Sam, if you want to understand anything about the plans you have for chemistry, it's well, I'll, I'll say a little bit about it uh, because we uh, have uh, two undergraduates who are working under the uh, direction of uh, Sam and Lilith. Lalit, and uh, these are going after compounds that were came out of a previous screen. These are the M compounds. Uh, Lori could probably give you the exact origin of them. But these oh, are- um, yes. Sam might actually have a slide that he could pop up that oh, would help you talk about this. Sam, he, he, I, well, I, I mean, you, you're welcome to keep talking about it, but he, he might have a slide that would help you uh, articulate. Yeah, because I, I haven't prepared any slides, yet, but uh, he's, you know, Sam and Lalit are doing the over- overseeing these compounds. Okay, right. So the origin of these of the work that we're doing is based upon the thionopyrimidine uh, structure base core that we have here. And we're looking at two different areas, one coming off of the pyrimidines where we see the modifications on these two compounds. And then we're looking at modifications coming off of the thionyl ring. So we're taking a look at you know two different areas of binding. Now, if you take a look at these compounds, these are really what 
the ATP site binders. These are similar in structure to a lot of the kinases. And so hopefully there will be popping out some kind of structure activity relationships that will overlap or give us some, uh, uh, we can learn something from say, for example, Uhang's compounds or some of the other series that are coming along. But these represent some of the uh, derivatives that are that we're targeting with the with the undergraduates. There's a little bit of chemistry to, to be developed here because the literature was a little bit sparse. Uh, so Sam uh, and uh, Laurie's group are providing uh, good oversight on this, and the, but they've made some progress to begin with. And so we're looking at not only the coming up with the inhibitors for the mirror ligases. But also, as you can see, putting on heavy atoms such as bromines, which may uh, assist in the um, uh, in the crystallography. Um, I think Sam can probably speak to the kinds of chemistry that's being done down uh, in that bottom part of the slide. And I'm going to stop at this point and let him do his job. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm an expert yet, Bob, but um, thanks. Um, yeah, so at the moment, Laura, um, Tommy and Olivia, they're only they're undergrad, they're in 15 hours a week. Um, so the, the progress is they've been, they've been going it for two weeks now, two or three weeks. Um, so we're just kind of get the ball rolling a little bit. Um, Olivia, I've actually mixed these two up. Olivia is working with a cyclohexane and two methyl substituted, um, thiophene. And they're a little bit easier. Um, Tommy is working on the on the block protected, which obviously be protects under HDL conditions, and the N methyl substituent. Um, and the chemistry has been a little bit problematic, as Bob said. There's not a lot to go off. Um, so, but luckily, it is only a two-step synthesis for the time being until we look at other privatization. So, hopefully, we'll be able to get that ball moving a little bit. At the moment, we. have reach the point where we have final compound on LCMS, which is positive. So we're moving in the right direction. That sounds great. Thanks. That's an uh, interesting set of compounds. Really, really good. Um, just to be the nag about the open thing, are you are you guys um, sharing a lab notebook or anything or um, you know, data? Um, I think that's a question for Laurie, but I think we're happy to, I believe. OK. If you want to, yeah. then let, let me know. So we are happy to. Um, everyone uses a uh, shoot. I'm now actually just blanking on the name of the notebook that we're using. Fine molecule. Oh, it is that. Okay, good. Uh, fine molecule. Uh, so I mean, we can export PDFs of notebook pages and things like that if that's easiest. Um, we can also just pop this, uh, I was just saying to Sam, Sam's going to register for a GitHub account or I'm going to upload these slides, one of the two, we'll, we'll figure that out in a moment. Um, and then, yeah, we will have this up there as well. Um, I believe that we just still use the same OSA shipping spreadsheet, is that right, Matt, to send these? Perfect. Yeah. Um, and we will send these to AstraZeneca as well, so once we actually get the ADME data on them, we can... Uh, I can share that on the GitHub where we maybe register the compounds or, or something like that. We can figure out what that looks like, but yeah. Great. That's fantastic. And and if your um, undergrad students want to join us here and um, then just tell them to get a GitHub account. Um, then yeah. We can have, we can have I, I have invited them all to do it. Uh, Tommy definitely has a clash at this time. I'm not sure about Olivia, but um, yeah. Yeah. I think they're both, they're both in labs or in class at the moment, um, yep. but next time might work out. All right, great. Thanks very much for the update. Um, we've got a couple of minutes left. Um, any other business anyone would like to raise? So I might jump in here. Bart suggested I say hi. hello. So hi, everyone. I'm Julie Early. It's been a while since I've sat in on a meeting. I often have a conflict set at this time. It's nice to see some chemistry moving along and some enzymology data coming in. It's great progress since I was last here. Um, hope things go better with the co-crystal structures, the crow uh, structure solution in general, I should say. Um, and yeah, I think we're all anticipating that microbiology data when that gets going. So yeah, thanks for inviting me. Thanks. Always welcome. Okie doke. Anybody else? Last orders? 
If not, then thanks for coming along, everybody. Um, and uh, we will meet again in a, in about a month. And good luck with all the various experiments. Nice to see everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.